What will be the greatest gift? That what we will call our treasure. There's many gifts, my brother, my sister, that we can receive even in this time. <clears throat> even the kids. And as we say, there's only one reason, and I hope that you will, and your friends, and with your family, you will tell them there's only one reason, because God the Father gave the most, most precious gift. Jesus Christ. Amen. And him who came to earth, if we understand what he has given us, if we really understand what he has given us, our life could be so much easier without the law in religion. The law in religion. But a thankfulness, a gratitude for the amazing grace given to us. You can connect gift with grace. Gift with grace. A gift is something that you don't deserve. <clears throat> grace explains the fact that we don't deserve it. We don't deserve the gift. Are you with me? And I pray that in this time, maybe you go and write down with gratitude that what God has given you. What do you have because of him? And that in everything that you received, in everything that you received is because of his grace. Amen. Now, um, Carlos Hanna, here's the script, 2 Corinthians 9. If you can write down, 2 Corinthians 9. I always say, get a Bible that you can write in. If you don't have a Bible that you can write in, come and get one from me. But um, when you can give your child or your grandchild a Bible, <clears throat> with all the things that God has given you, all that God has said to you. And uh, that is some gold. So that's part of inheritance, man. The treasure of what God has spoken to your mom or your grand grandfather. Let it be so. Uh, sorry, there's no children church this morning. Um, if that is okay. Unless you want to go and catch a Christian chicken. We have Christian chickens out there. But, um, God say. Good. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 9 15 13, 14, 15 thank you yes the scripture says thanks be to God for his indescribable gift everybody say indescribable gift I can a gift is given unto us and we will take eternity to try to describe the awesomeness, the preciousness of the gift given to us. Because for eternity we will still see more and more and more and more of God. Like we said, there will be no boring day in heaven. You know, like a child, he opened the gift and he can play with it. And sometimes then he's getting bored with the gift. And the excitement, that excitement of opening up the gift. That excitement of opening up the gift. My brother, my sister, that is what can stay with you for eternity. Because there will be always something more to discover about the beauty and the depth and the quality of who God is. And if we can make that the center of what we call our treasure, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Hey? Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. But then, is it just a thing of, I choose with my heart that God will be the treasure? Or I ask Holy Spirit to open up for me the awesomeness of the gift. Because then it's a revelation that he is the treasure. It's not just the decision that <clears throat> my heart will be with God. He's my treasure and that's it. That's a decision. But the revelation 
through the Holy Spirit what must happen inside here is who is Jesus Christ the center of the indescribable gift that God has given us and I pray <clears throat> that you will challenge yourself that especially in this year to, to say to yourself this indescribable gift Lord I want to get definition of it describe it describe something of it to me it's undescribable what does that mean you will never understand it no 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 it means you need the Holy Spirit to open it up for you in yourself you can understand nothing of God but when Holy Spirit open up the word that's when you receive Christ when you realize something about that scripture you gave your life to Christ and Holy Spirit brought the rebirth of your spirit. Amen? But from there, <clears throat> you decide what you will seek. You seek the kingdom. You seek the kingdom. You make the choice that your heart will be there with God because you choose that he will be the treasure. If in that place, then you don't ask Holy Spirit to open up for you what is the awesomeness of the, this treasure, you will come into a place of just the law of choosing, choosing the whole time that my heart is with God as my treasure. And it's a fight the whole time about how God must be the treasure because I'm putting my heart in a lot of other things that I make priority. That where you put your priority, that is where you are taking your heart. Your heart will go to the place where your priority lies. Hello? Because you prioritize your treasure. What does it mean? You prioritize what is important, the most important to you. The most important to me is to be right. Oh boy. <laughs> Not a good place. Most important is that everything will be fine. Most important that I will make the right decision. Most, impo most important that I will do all these things right. God is not in it. Come on, man. Let him be the center point. My, host, my most important priority is to see him and more of him. And that he will be the center of what, who I am. Because with him, there is my life. In him, my life is hidden in Christ. So you find the life that God has given you, the life that he died for. You want to open up that treasure that you will open up if you allow the Holy Spirit to do it. You will open it up for the rest of your life. And the excitement will not be gone. But like that child, he opened it up, that, that major excitement now is, is going to, he saw something. But there's something more, there's something more, there's something more. There's always something more to open up, to open up, to open up. That will be precious, that will be excellent, that will be for your benefit. Can we believe that God is only the best for us? Or I first want to see the treasure before I choose to be excited. I need first to see the changing of circumstances. I first need to see how certain things come in line. Then the excitement is there. Why is that child excited? Because he has faith in his mom and dad that they want to just you know, open up the thing and there's a rotten egg in it. They, no, no. They have a certain faith in mom and dad. They have a certain expectation because... They know their mom and dad. Not true? But because of who you believe God is, because of that, just because of who you believe he is, you can have an excitement about next year. You can have exci an excitement about the dream that Father has for you, your wife, your children. Are you with me? Ach, nee, 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 nee. It's not a long dienst, nee. You are still here. Give your neighbor a holy smack and say, hey, wake up. Yeah, I need your pa harder slant. I say. 
Goed. Wat sê ons? Oh, my brother, please. This indescribable gift, you can go into the Amplified and a lot of... Wat verwijsings in Engels? Verwijsings. References. Right. On this scripture. <clears throat> but go and make a study about this indescribable gift. That your mind, your perspective cannot contain it. You will try forever to bring it into your perspective. But the excitement can be there always. You're not excited about the circumstances. The emotions in your soul can go up and down, up and down. But in your spirit where the fullness of God dwells, in your spirit where you have the mind of Christ, you have, like the Amplified says, you have the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God in your spirit. In that place where everything became new, like, remember, 2 Corinthians 5, I'm a new creation, the old has passed away, everything became new. But you look at your life, I look at my life and say, yo, yo, yo. No, there's some old rabbi still. <clears throat> now, where did everything become new? In your spirit, eh? Your spirit was reborn. Not half of your spirit. Your spirit in perfection reborn. You need to grow up. And you need to mature your spirit. But your spirit is perfect. Hello? That's why God says, I indeed, I want, I'm looking for the ones that will worship me in spirit and truth. Spirit with not capital it. My spirit with the truth under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if I can live from that place, in my spirit there's an excitement because the excitement, the emotions of God, the feelings of God, what he feels is in my spirit because... I'm running through history revision. Romans 8, the Holy Spirit testify in my spirit. Hello? That I'm a child of God and cry out in my spirit, Abba, Papa. So and there from that place of identity, Holy Spirit in my spirit testifying, I can have excitement about tomorrow. Soul can look at things and say there's no reason to be excited about. There's nothing to be excited about. Soul could say, hey, but what makes you different than a baboon is the fact that you are a spirit. And baboon does not have spirit. He has a soul, personality, intellect. Well, he can sometimes be less than a baboon than some human beings. In, in <clears throat> not one of us, you know, other people. But uh, what am I saying? Allow Holy Spirit to open it up so that the excitement that is in your spirit that is linked with the excitement of God about your life. That you will look with that into your future. To, to see more and more of this indescribable gift. Gaan op een ontdekkingsreis. Engels, go on a... Jullie is moest Engels, kom. Discovery. What is on Deacon's race in English? Oh, they don't have it in English. Can you believe it? <laughs> okay. On this road of discovery. And go and discover with excitement what God has for you. But too many times we go into the word to understand what's the will of God. But we go with either a fear or an anxiety or with a stress or with a thing. I need to know where I need to go. I need to know it. But let's go and find God's will and seek his face. Because we know God is excited about our future. God is excited about what he dreamt about when he thought about you. And he created you. And you were made. Lord ons mensen mark. Lord ons rika mark. Lord ons. Just say your name. One, two, three. When Father, Son, Holy Spirit looked at one another, Lord ons, who's ons? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Lord ons means more. He decided that you will be made, and he was excited about what he made. We made a mess, yes, but God has the faith through his Son that we will get out of the mess. 
and get into the excitement of what he has planned for you and me. Who of you want your son or your daughter just to suffer and have no excitement about life? What freaky father or mother would that be? Now why would we put that with God? God wants you to have an excellent life. I'm not talking prosperity teaching that those hachis, if I must say it like that. No, I'm talking about God wants you to be fulfilled in life. God wants you to be excited because he with a jealous love wants you to be excited about him in the center of whatever you do. Let's look here. Let's talk about this treasure, this heart, your positioning to the treasure, this gift given to you. <clears throat> May that be our priority. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Let's say, thank you, Lord, for your indescribable gift. Please. Too many people sit in church and they find it very boring. And we can go on now for another two hours. <clears throat> There's only one service, not two today. So this one can be much longer. Is it right to me, Dylan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, if that is true, if I'm thankful and I am excited to see more, then when the word is opened, when I spend time with the word, when I'm out there, I have a certain expectation. I have a certain expectation. Because I decided my treasure is not the changing of circumstances. My treasure is Christ himself. And I'm excited to see something of him tomorrow. I'm not talking about you must pray the whole time and you must just quote scripture the whole time. No, I'm talking about a certain perspective, a certain attitude, a certain way of looking at things. They're just doing life with him. You're not just serving him. Yes, you serve him and you do it unto the Lord because you're a worshiper. But you're also working with him. Working with him and worship unto him. Amen. So please, my brother, my sister, let's get into that place of excitement, that place of having a positive, clean, healthy expectation of tomorrow. In spite of what we did wrong. <clears throat> because in what we did wrong, praise God for the cross. Because of the word of the cross, the power of God unto salvation the cross, I will boast in nothing else, in nothing else, Galatians 6, 14, hey? Boast in nothing else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought me the victory, and my victory is him, and my victory is in him. The victorious one, the successful one in the universe. My life is hidden in him as the success. My life is found in success, but success is called Jesus Christ. But where he is not, that is not called success. According to the world, there's a lot of definitions of success. But if you understand how to find your life in him and live from that place, you're living from a place of success. Amen. That's the first one of eight. Okay. But we will, ons gaan bieke gauwer gaan. Wow, ek nog teets nie die skrift in. Halleluja. It's not going to happen, eh? All right, praise die Heere. <coughs> Next one. Romans 12, verse 6. All I'm going to say about that, and another hundred scriptures, talking about how Holy Spirit will give you gifts. Holy Spirit has given you the specific gifts, but there's also gifts from God um, in the, what we would call skill what we would call abilities. And that is that at the end of the day, with that gift, that gift has a purpose. Now, if God says the undescribable gift given to us in Christ Jesus, that, that means there was a purpose for it. There was a purpose why Christ came. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved and for that purpose, that he wants this love relationship with you and me. That's why he sent Jesus. So when you think tomorrow, when you think tonight, when you speak to family and friends, just let them know 
There was a purpose. There was a purpose, and it was because God so loved the world, so loved the world. In the gift, there's purpose. So if God gives you the gift that you have the skill to do certain things, this gift in leadership, this gift in, uh, through, through many gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hello? There's purpose in it. That's not just for you to have a gift. And it's definitely not, first of all, for yourself, to enrich yourself. That's, God, what do you want to do for this, through this gift? You gave me this gift for purpose. Help me to honor you with this gift. But I cannot honor you with this gift if I don't find the purpose why you've given me this gift. Why did you give me this ability? You see, some of the guys, their hands, they just, their hands, they just touch the engine and it's, you know, it's rach. Or this hand, he can just take a paintbrush and it's just there. That hand, he can just get that guitar and it's just expressing. This was met Makar. That man, he just opened his mouth and there's wisdom. He's just this leader that can draw everybody together. And that gift was given for a purpose. And you need to understand the purpose of the gifts given to you. Amen. Because what God called a gift was for a purpose. It was for a purpose. But receive it always in the context of love, always in the context of honor. Hello? You're still with me? And may that be part of your life. All right, that's that one. Third one, Ephesians 2.8. You are saved. You are saved. It is through faith. It is through faith. You like it, For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is a gift of God. And in, if you summarize it, it is faith as a gift. So, now why does the God, the word says, I must believe? You must have faith. But if it's a gift from God, then God is just supposed to give it to me. Because if I must walk by faith, I must stand by faith, I must overcome the world by faith. 1 John 5, God is pleased um, through my faith. The righteous will walk by faith. Uh, hello? Now how can faith be then a gift of God? Faith comes from? Hearing, hearing from the word of God. Romans ten seventeen. hey? So the essence of faith is in the word. This is the ultimate, ultimate gift in your life. And what I get from this is faith. There's many people believing a lot of rubbish. They have a lot of faith to do a lot of rubbish and a lot of distraction. A lot of things in what they do is not from God. There's a lot of guys that can blow themselves up as a suicide bomber and they do it by faith i mean that guy believes things and he has a level of faith in laying down his life that many 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 christians would don't have but in the future they're going to have it we don't speak death god's going to raise up the church amen but the difference in their faith your faith is your faith come, came from a place where God, has, where you opened up the gift, the greatest gift, the living word of God. Because what this word described is Jesus Christ. Amen? The living word. And from this ultimate gift, you received, and the fruit of that was faith. Faith. That's why when you have faith, and it came from, came from here. It's just a, a vice. It's just a proof that it's a gift. Gift. When I walk by faith, it's just I honored the gift that was given to me. 
And I walk to testify about the ultimate gift. Because my walk by faith, what makes me different is my faith come from the where. From the where. And all those other guys, billions could be, their faith in whatever they believe is from other deception. Like we always say, there's no such thing as somebody that does not believe. If somebody says, no, I don't believe there's a God, you must have a major lot of faith <coughs> to believe there is no God. Because we can, you're going to look at the facts. You're going to look at how he manifested himself. Go and look, uh, watch that uh, film, The Case of Christ. Who has seen The Case of Christ? Man, excellent. The Case of Christ. True story about these two uh, journalists and how the one went on this mission to prove that God does not exist. And long story, at the end, he's a pastor of a, of a specific church in America now because he just could not get it right. He, f he flew to this place and ate Nadai Plak and different places. He went to go and see all these specialists, all these professor, this one, that one, and how they said what they said to prove that God does not exist. Because they, let me not go into that, but because they went to a restaurant and their child started to suffocate. Hey, you got not seen it? Started to suffocate. And then this nurse, this, this lady helped the child and the child was okay. And then this, the, the mother said, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And she said, no. We wanted to go to another day restaurant, and then God said to us, we must go to this restaurant. And just the thing of, God said, we must go to this restaurant. My brother and my sister, when you start more and more and more to walk with the Holy Spirit, it's not forget 20 scriptures, where must you buy butter and bread? That's not what I'm saying. But more practically, start to just walk with him. Start to just walk with him. And this lady with her husband, just old lady, just they felt the Holy Spirit said, go to that restaurant. So they went there, they enjoyed the meal, and that happened, and just because of who she is, she just helped the little child. And at the end, that guy became a pastor and for many, 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 many years doing a thing for God. But it started with a lady that was just in a natural way. Walking with God. Come on, man. Come on, man. We will see so much beauty of God's gift out there if we learn how to walk in the Spirit. Amen. The gift of staying awake during a sermon. That's amazing. Ach ja, follows means it's sin. Good. Romans 6, 23. Eternal life. Eternal life. We're talking about eternal life as a gift. For the wages which sin pays is death. But the bountiful, bounty, everybody say bountiful. Free gift. That bountiful once again about this awesomeness of this gift. Of God is eternal life through in union with Jesus Christ, our Lord. And you have received that gift already. Not one day you have eternal life, but eternity is set in your hearts, says the word. So you have that gift already, and you can live today in that what has eternal value. Because the day when we die, remember, in 1 Corinthians, Paul says to those guys, everything will be tested as through fire. Did you build with that what has eternal value, or did you build something that you were very serious about it, you were upright, obrecht, you wanted to do it for God, but there was no guidance of God in it. I know you wanted to do it for me, says the Lord. But I am not found in what you have built. And if Christ is not found in what you have built, it must be burned away. The scripture there says, and you will be saved as through fire. 
But what you've built, if you didn't build with that what is, has eternal value, it will be burned over. Burn, it will be rubbish. Hello, is this met car? So may God help you and let God show you, God, what I've built in this year and in the past, help me to see what, what is rubbish. Help me to understand what must be, what must be burned away as a Katsua still. And what must I work with that has eternal value tomorrow? What in my relationships might need to change? What must be put in the fire? And please, Lord, by your grace, help me to work with only the quality that is coming from the fire, from the fire of God. Because the rest will be a destructive fire that can destroy my life. But God as the consuming fire will protect me from the destructive fire. Amen. God going to help you. God going to help me to build for next year with that what has eternal value. Make sure when you have a argument make sure when you have something to say that what you have say has value not saying just preach the whole morning to the evening please not but with what you say machtar waarde that also does not mean serious the whole day please the joy of the lord is our strength amen let's enjoy our lives but in a way that god is honored Let's listen to the music that God will be pleased about. Let's laugh about a joke that he will also laugh about. Let's talk about the situation the way he will talk it, about it. But when you just have this fellowship with him. Remember John? No, not John. Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and I knock when you hear my knock. No, when you hear my voice. Where? On the other side of the door. You come to know the language. You come to know the language of God so that you can recognize the voice on the other side of the door. To open up the door where he wants to come and tell you all the things you do wrong and all the do, things you do right and what you're supposed to do. No. Where he just wants to come and fellowship with you. When he just really wants to come and talk to you. When you, you can hear his heart and you can share your heart with him. Not about issues. May God teach us that way of doing. Amen. Otherwise, we will be Martha in the kitchen moaning about Mary at the feet. <sighs> Hallelujah. Okay, next one. What's going on? James 1.17. That's the time right now. <laughs> it's coming up. We walk by faith. James 1, 17. That's it. Every good gift and every perfect, free, large, full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there can be no variation, rising or setting, or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse. There's a here mournful in the Amplified, but you need to read the Amplified very slowly. I say, when that's by a concept, by a concept. And what the Dhamma says, my brother, my sister, only receive. And James actually say this to the church. Only receive that you, what you know is from God. Only the gift that comes from God is good. If you just put it really from the other side. Every good gift and every perfect is from above. There's many things people f uh, would call good. There's a lot of music that people can f call good, but it's, some of that is even demonic. So you cannot say it's coming from above. No, look from the other side in perspective. You decide you will only call a gift good if you know that it's coming from the Father above. But we know from the Father above, the ultimate, ultimate good, indescribable gift is Jesus Christ, His Son. And you know He's from the Father above. And all other gifts is found in Him and with Him. That scripture is not part of it, but Romans 8, 32. 
that he wants his what shall we say about all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Him, will he not then, who gave us Jesus Christ, with him give us every gift? Who shall hide on his summit on us, ook alles genadiglik skink in Christus Jesus. But you need to have the right perspective of what gift is from God. Because only that gift is good. What you call gift, what you call good must be from God. And that what is from God is always good. But you need to have the Holy Spirit perspective of do you have the right link? Because what you have in your hand, what you have around you, can you see what is from God and what is from hell? May God show you. May God show you. Because even hell can produce and give you what was promised to you. The third temptation given to Jesus. What was promised to Jesus? The devil presented. Hell presented to Jesus. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God in Christ Jesus. So, the devil took Jesus and said, here's the kingdoms of the world. What was promised to you? Let's stand on the promises of God. I give you what the Father promised you. Yeah, I give it to you. Just focus more on me right now than on what God has. And he said, no. Get behind me, Satan, because God alone you will worship. Well, he didn't say worship. What is worship? The one that you focus on the most. When you focus on God the most, but if you focus on the vision and the promises of God more than on God, it is like devil saying, standing there and say, hey, I can give you also, I can also give you the promises of God. I can organize that. You know, what God has promised you in your circumstances, in your finances, in different things in your life. Understand, the enemy can so easily remind you of the promises, show you the promises, bring you to a place of drive-through, from uh, just, just go through here and then you have it. Uh -uh. We will not go for that type of gift. We will understand when Father has given me the gift and how it is given to me. Okay, there we are. The, uh, the next one. John 4, 10. John 4, verse 10. Jesus answered, If you had only known and had recognized God's gift and who this is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, Instead, and he would have given you living water. My brother, my sister, if you only have known the gift, then what we ask in prayer will be different. Because the gift for that lady at this stage is that my circumstances would change. That it would not be so hard to get the water, to get this, to, to have the breakthrough for just daily living. Who of you wants certain breakthroughs in your daily living? Only me. Okay. If you only had known and recognized God's gift. May God help you that this year coming in your future. You will come to know, come to know and come to recognize the gift that the Father has given you. Because then our expectation and our prayer life could maybe Radically changed. Radically changed. Because he recognized that he is not a normal man. But in the revelation of who she was and who he was, and he, he saw certain things about me, but he didn't condemn me. He didn't condemn me. And the more I saw who he was, my, what I asked changed. Oh Lord, give me, give me that water. No, you don't recognize me. You don't see who I am. And when she saw who he was, she forgot about her needs. And she went and told them about the ultimate gift that she 
So, and Samaria came to repentance and received Christ. Oh man, God's going to help us. Amen. I'm tempted to go into, but there's no time now. Because it's a gift to go at a certain time. Oh, come reageer jylle nou. Yeah. Okay, second last. Ephesians 3 verse 7. Ephesians 3 verse 7. Of which I became a minister according to the gift, according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of His power. According to the gift of His grace. In the context here, he said, I'm working with the grace. I'm working because of the grace. Grace has to do with enablement, unmerited favor. But in that favor is God giving me the enablement. Amazing enablement. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amazing enablement that I can be a child of God. Actually, I'm a wretch. I'm, I'm a rubbish. But what an amazing enablement God has given me. Not, I'm not able. But he has given me the enablement to become a child of God. And he says, this amazing enablement, I walked and I worked with this enablement as a gift. As a gift. So God enabling you through the gift, you are enabled to do certain things. Faith as a gift. Christ, the gift, with all of that, in the purpose of Christ, you in Christ, Christ in you, there's a purpose. There's a purpose. Why seated with Christ in heavenly places? To look down into your situation, not to look from your situation. Yes, when I look from my situation up, I'm talking about me being dependent on him. I need you, Lord. I need you. But sitting with Christ in heavenly places is me understanding that in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm supposed to address the storm. I'm supposed to address the storm. That's why Jesus, when he dealt with the storm, when he came on the water, he got in the boat. He said, you little of faith. Why? Because they were supposed to address the storm through the faith that he has given them. But praise God for his grace that when I fail... In addressing the storm, he will still get into the boat and help me. Amen. Amen. You are here. Okay. Last one, I think. Psalm 127, 3. Sometimes my flesh didn't always think so. But um, 127, 3. Behold, children are a heritage. From the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Heritage in many translations talking about a reward, talking about a gift, talking about this treasure. A gift from God. Children, a gift from God. But I want to take it further. Children as a gift. Children as a gift. When you became a child, you became a gift to Bluefontaine. You became a gift there at the workplace. You're a gift to that company. You're a child, and being a child is being a gift. Hello, the ultimate gift, the Son of God, the Son of God, the Father, given to us. But when you have a child, Himna and Jaden, I must present them as a gift because I receive them as a gift from God. And how will they be presented as a gift here on earth? Because why? If he is the undescribable gift, Jesus Christ, who are you? Ambassadors of the gift. You are living in the gift, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the gift is living in you. Your ambassador of the gift you are a trophy of his victory trophy you are bragging about the gift hello you are the fragrance of christ i don't know if you can say the fragrance of the gift 
Well, he's Christ and he's the gift. The fragrance of Christ. You are the letter of Christ. You are the letter describing the gift. I'm talking about all these you find in 2 Corinthians 1 to 7. And you're a co-worker with Christ. You are working with the gift. I bless you with that, that you will understand in this season that you will so appreciate, be with gratitude about the ultimate gift, Jesus Christ. But that you will always understand the awesome privilege you have to represent the gift, to work with the gift, to be the fragrance of the gift, the trophy the, the, of his victory. And that you will understand that awesome, awesome privilege that we have in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I pray that you will arrest our lives. Holy Spirit, that you will come and do what you want to do. I pray that you will give each one of us a revelation, a revelation of the ultimate gift being given by the Father to us. God, and that we will grow in this, grow through faith as a gift, grow through the, the grace, the eternal life as a gift. So many things, God, that in the essence we understand it's through your grace. So that we will understand how to live as a gift in the place where you have called us to be the gift. Help us to understand where and how we're supposed to live as the gift. With the gift living in us and we living in the gift, Jesus Christ. Our life is hidden, is hidden in Jesus Christ, the ultimate gift. But help us through your spirit that we will open up, each one of us, your word with an expectation, with an expectation, Lord. With an excitement of knowing that tomorrow we're going to know so much more, so much more of the beauty and the splendor of who you are. I pray that you will open our, the eyes of our hearts in such a way, in Jesus' name, as all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.